Hello, this is Dr. David A. Paget, Associate Professor of Geography and Director of the Geographic Information Sciences Lab at Tennessee State University. Today, I'm going to share my presentation, Democratizing Geospatial Technology, a model for providing technical assistance in community-based participatory mapping to environmental justice stakeholder communities. So this presentation uh, essentially follows some of the work that I've been doing uh, with the Tennessee State University Geographic Information Sciences Lab uh, under the Ethical Geo Fellowship Program and with the Deep South Center for Environmental Justice. Approximately two years ago, uh, I became an Ethical Geo Fellow through the American Geographical Society. And I primarily used those funds and time uh, to enhance my work uh, in environmental justice communities throughout the country, uh, democratizing geospatial technology, uh, making geospatial technology a tool for empowering uh, environmental justice communities, uh, stakeholders, and aligned individuals and organizations. One of the uh, goals was to develop a replicable framework or replicable model. Um, here is a basic framework. One of the biggest parts of our framework working with community-based organizations and democratizing geospatial technology is involving young people. And so uh, a lot of the community-based organizations that we work with are heavily um, staffed and the membership is heavily baby boomers. Uh, baby boomers went almost overnight, it seems, from a time when we had rotary phones and black and white TVs uh, to handheld devices with more computing power than it took to put men on the moon. Uh, and so uh, while baby boomers bring a wealth of wisdom, a wealth of resources, in some cases, a wealth of dollars to organizations, uh, they aren't the most technologically savvy. But by connecting the older members with youth, uh, young people are very much married to technology and are able to immediately uh, grasp the technology and enable their grandmothers, grandfathers, and parents to become effective users in applying this technology to fights against environmental injustice. Uh, we use ArcGIS online because a lot of the original licenses or basic licenses are free of charge. A lot of the organizations that we um, work with do not have a lot of capital. And so any cost shaving measures are, at, are best used. Uh, we use, um, in some cases, uh, low cost handheld GPS receivers if budgets allow, but there are also um, apps that can be used on mobile phones that are accurate enough for this type of work. We go on the ground, uh, we, we, we train people uh, and we um, uh, help them to understand the science of mapping which is probably more important or as important as, uh, as using the technology and the nuts and bolts of GIS. Uh, I've done a lot of pathology mapping in my 30 years of being a GIS user. Uh, I've mapped crime in neighborhoods. I've mapped uh, waste sites in neighborhoods. Uh, over the years, people have asked, well, what about the good things? What about our assets? Why don't we map those? Why don't we map some of the good land uses in our community and figure out ways to replicate them? We want more parks, we want more playgrounds, we want more grocery stores. How do we get more of those? Uh, and so we started to involve communities in mapping assets uh, that can be used for community preservation and other, other efforts. 
we don't start off with technology. We start off with uh, no tech. Let's just walk our neighborhood. Let's see what's out there. It's surprising how much we miss when we drive through our neighborhoods at 35 miles per hour. And, and that's all of us. Uh, and so through our community walks, with pen and paper, uh, we eventually develop asset maps uh, that can be used to uh, qualify and quantify what's on the ground in our communities. Uh, we take a different approach. You know, we look at land uses that might be considered an eyesore, like this vacant lot, and ask, you know, what can be here? What are the possibilities? Instead of saying, oh my gosh, this is a, a vacant lot. Uh, we, we have to, it's an eyesore. It's covered with trash and litter. What could it be? Um, one phone call to an absentee landlord, and this lot could suddenly be an urban market. It could suddenly be an urban garden. It could suddenly be a playground. It could suddenly be a lot of things with one phone call to an absentee landlord. Uh, we can get anchor institutions involved in redeveloping underutilized properties. Uh, one of the best examples is Georgia State University in Atlanta. And it's uh, taken over and repurposed a lot of properties or Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland, an HBCU that has purchased a strip mall and is using it to teach their students about entrepreneur, entrepreneurialism, uh, skills that aren't necessarily found in any classroom. We've worked in the Lower Ninth Ward in, in New Orleans, Louisiana, some of our case studies, uh, mapping catch basins, uh, in this case, a young person was very much at the center of creating a, a map of catch basins that can be used and result in the development of a uh, community-based um, catch basin maintenance program, similar to adopt a highway, in this case, adopt a catch basin to prevent flooding from occurring and reoccurring in New Orleans. Um, we've worked with the Wedgwood community in Pensacola, Florida, which is a leader in using uh, geospatial technology. In this case, uh, the maps were used to block a highway that was planned to be built straight through the community. Uh, this same community also used G GIS to block a um, landfill permit, uh, as you can see here. Um, The Turkey Creek community is using asset mapping to establish their community as a relevant historical location uh, versus efforts on the part of the state of Mississippi to build a very large inland port facility. Um, somehow their community is zoned industrial. Uh, they are using asset mapping to show that, yes, we're here. Uh, we're not in industrial land use. You might ask, how does it, how did this community get zoned industrial? Uh, and it's clearly residential. Well, it's Mississippi. And during the time in that state's history, uh, a lot of black people were disempowered and couldn't, couldn't participate on zoning boards. Um, in Africatown, this uh, front page story on National Geographic magazine uh, recorded the rediscovery of the Clotilda. And the, the last ship we court known to have brought enslaved Africans to these shores. Uh, a lot of attention was brought to Africatown, Alabama. Um, and so this community wants to um, develop historical and cultural tourism and keep the funds from that historical and cultural tourism uh, in house. And the way that we started with that was through asset map. Uh, and then property uh, assessment mapping. Uh, and so this effort continues. Uh, we collaborated with the National Park Service in developing um, story maps that cover the 14 points of interest on the proposed Africatown Connections Blue Way, which will connect Africatown's history with opportunities for recreation, tourism, 
uh, outdoor activities. Uh, we create a second story map uh, using drones. And so here is our um, FAA certified drone pilot, uh, Dr. Claire Grove, who, as you can see, is a woman of color. Uh, she stands out because only about 10% or less of FAA certified drone pilots are women. And clearly, Dr. Grove, being a woman of color, definitely stands out and is an excellent role model for young people. Um, so here's a story map that was created by students in my urban geography class, in part, and undergraduate researchers at Tennessee State University getting the opportunity to uh, become actively engaged in empowering communities in environmental justice research. Um, we work with the Pleasantville community in Houston, Texas, who's used uh, EJ Screen uh, to evaluate and assess the wider impact of their um, air quality sensors that they place in their community. Um, I have um, worked work in the Overtown community in Miami, Florida, uh, who's developing um, property uh, in an effort to stave off gentrification uh, that has become rampant in South Florida as uh, wealthier landowners move inland and attempt to take over uh, these black communities and wipe their history off the map. Uh, we are putting um, Overtown community history solidly on the map. Uh, and the original story map has been uh, converted and upgraded into a um, community-based walking tour uh, that may soon have voiceovers. I've also worked with the uh, Air Alliance Houston uh, with these uh, air quality ambassadors using GIS to place air sensors throughout the community, um, taking them through an air quality institute that involved GIS mapping so that they're able to um, effectively place air sensors in their community to stave off the impacts of the refineries and other um, locally undesirable land uses. Placing uh, um, purple air sensors around the community uh, so that they are able to detect air pollution at a local level uh, versus the wider area that's covered by regulatory monitors. Eventually placing all of these monitors on a common uh, map dashboard. Thank you very much for your time and attention and hope to enjoy, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. This is David A. Padgett.